the fifth and final brigade of the Iraq troop surge has arrived in Baghdad. According to Pentagon officials, the extra troops will clamp down on Baghdad's northern and southern belts, areas where insurgents have had the opportunity to sit back and plan attacks. Two new helicopters are getting put through their paces. The Army's newest Chinook helicopter, the CH-47 Foxtrot, received 60 hours of flight tests at Fort Campbell, Kentucky. And at the National Training Center, the 72 Alpha Lakota, a light utility helicopter took to the air. The intent for the Lakota is homeland security, disaster relief, and law enforcement support. Improvised explosive devices are the number one killer on the battlefield. In order for soldiers to defeat this faceless enemy, they must train long before they deploy to a combat zone. The Joint IED Defeat Organization attacks the threat by Army soldiers with a training center called the Center of Excellence, dedicated to counter IED training. Each branch of service has a center of excellence, and the Army Center is located at Fort Irwin, California. It was time to celebrate some well-deserved rest. U.S. Central Command's r and program reached a milestone with its 500,000th participant. The party started as the plane landed at Dallas-Fort Worth International Airport. Around 420 troops make it home each day from a combat zone for two weeks of rest and recuperation. The group celebrated the many civilian and government agencies that worked together to make that possible. For these volunteers, there's no Super Bowl ring in it for them, and there's certainly no pay. But they do it for the reward of knowing that they, too, are doing a great service for their country. And for that, we salute you. You are the heroes. Meteorologists predict an active storm season this year with an estimated 17 major hurricanes, five of them expected to be Category 3 or higher. Hurricanes are almost synonymous with New Orleans as it brings the devastation of Katrina to mind. The U.S. Army Corps of Engineers met a self-imposed deadline to have 40 temporary hydraulic pumps in place at the city's outfall canals by the start of hurricane season. Corps of Engineers correspondent Mary Cochran joins us now with more. Mary? Thanks, Steve. The newly appointed Chief of Engineers visited New Orleans' hurricane protection system. Lieutenant General Robert Van Antwerp also took time to talk to people touched by Katrina's destruction. The storm left debris across a 15,000-mile area. More than 12 million cubic yards of it were removed. That's enough to fill the Superdome in New Orleans more than five times. When I visited the city just six months ago, that devastation was still very apparent. Today, the debris removal mission is 99% complete. The Corps contracted 395 local Louisiana businesses helping to get the city back on its feet. See? Well, it's good to see the Corps is making some good progress down there. I definitely think so. And it's time to give a big Army hua to the stations that bring Army News Watch into your home, and especially to our Dayton, Ohio viewers on channel DATV20. And Paducah, too, serving western Kentucky and southern Illinois. Thanks.